Hey Snow Tracks YouTubers, it's time for another insightful walk around. This time it's on the big, big news in the snowmobile business from Polaris, and that is their launch of a new proprietary Polaris built, built for snowmobile, four stroke engine. So let's get into the nitty gritty first. Uh, I'm sure that you want to know about the motor. Here's the good news this is a twin cylinder. 270 450 firing engine that has that Harley kind of cadence, but it also has a gear driven counterbalancer, so it's as smooth as butter. It's an eight valve engine, double overhead cam, and it's a dry sump motor. So, those of you who are Polaris gurus uh, probably know, or just from my brief description, are realizing that this is likely very similar to a Razor power plant. Yeah, that's true, it is, uh, but it is different. It's dry sump, the razor is wet sump, so this has an oil recovery tank and it makes the motor uh, uh, shorter overall so that it can be jammed down lower into the front of the vehicle. So that's why it's dry sump. Uh, it is obviously EFI, it's got two throttle bodies and it's a pretty impressive, uh, pretty impressive motor. It, uh, from the beginning, has been targeted and planned on being used in a snowmobile and they're, uh, they're good to their word. That's exactly what we've got here. So this is the first stage. Now, uh, I don't want to delay the drama because you want to know what horsepower puts out and so do we. So here's what Polaris is telling us and you got to realize we have only had access to this vehicle for just a few days so we're in the very infancy of its introduction. This is what Polaris told us. It has more than 80 horsepower and it has less than 100 horsepower. So if you've got your calculator out and you're a, you're a real numbers guru, you realize that's 90 horsepower. And that's a good number for them to be at because the 900 Ace uh, Rotax engine used in many Skidoo models is 95 claimed horsepower. This motor uh, feels every bit as strong as the uh, Rotax engine. It'll be very interesting when we're able to get them head to head. We have not been able to do that yet and we won't be able to do it here uh, at Yellowstone. Okay, so let's move on. What else is interesting about it? The, uh, the motor comes and is available in a variety of Polaris platforms. So just to get this in perspective, the S4 is not a model unto itself. This is an XC with an S4 power plant. But of course, you already know, you can get uh, the uh, multiple Polaris engines, maybe we'll just stick with the 650 and the 850, in multiple Polaris platforms. Well, that now you add the S4 to that repertoire of engines. So it's not a model to itself, it's an engine option in the Voyager, in the Indy XC, and in the Titan, you can get this motor. Okay, there are some styling cues on the uh, S4 powered uh, matrix models, and that is the extra venting on the hood below the windshield kind of gives it away. And also when you look here, you'll see that there's a new reverse shifter. And I just want to just talk about that for just a second. So often uh, reverse shifters, mechanical ones are clunky and sometimes electric ones are vague. This is really a nice working piece. I've been using it all day here and it is slick. It never misses a shift. It never, when the belt picks up the secondary, it doesn't ever do a big clunk. It just, it's seamless. It's, it's almost like, uh, it's almost like it is an electric shifter, but it's not. It's, it's a, a mechanical deal going down to the chain case. One of the things I notice is, is the cool brake noise that Polaris uh, uh, snowmobiles, particularly uh, Axis and Matrix models, that cool kind of whizzing sound that the brake makes. It doesn't do that because things have been juggled around on the chain case with, uh, with the brake rotor. But uh, having said that, there's one item I want to bring to our viewers that I know will create instantaneous angst. So take a deep breath, sit down and just relax. It has a drive-by-wire DBW throttle. All right, you haven't got time to write. You haven't got time to write an email or, or complain or anything. And of course, it's not our uh, it's not our place because we didn't design it to complain. But here's what I want you to know: this is the first DBW throttle that I have been exposed to that is seamless, transparent. Now that may not be completely accurate. I should be careful because Yamaha has done a really good job on the turbo with a DBW. This one here is just 
it's amazing. You, if somebody didn't tell you that it was DBW before you wrote it, you likely wouldn't be able to tell other than the throttle pressure is so light and so linear. And I know there's a, a lot of younger riders and particularly women who complain about uh, heavy throttle pull. This is just very, very nice. It's very even and light and, and it's positive. It's easy to take off and not jerk ahead. It's easy to just feather the motor up to engagement and move ahead with it. It's a really good working throttle. There's more news. It's a tri-mode, so it has eco, it has normal, and it has sport. Where are you going to want to run it? Mm, probably in sport most of the time, but here's the interesting news. You can drive it in normal and there's still no throttle lag. Normal is just a little bit softer in the mid-range, so uh, the, the sport mode is really the mode of preference in, in my humble opinion. But uh, it works really good. They've done a great job here. And I think that they knew the stakes were pretty high because you need to have that uh, seamless, almost invisible throttle response because that's what we're used to and that's what we expect as snowmobilers. An interesting uh, inclusion in the S4 engine package, which isn't part of any of the other uh, engines that Polaris offers is a, uh, a starter uh, interlock. So when you go to start this snowmobile, because it engages so low at 2100 RPM, you have to uh, squeeze the brake lever, which is the same way you do it on a, on a Polaris ATV. That interlock feature is now on the S4s. So what is the impression in terms of handling uh, is there any material effect that this engine has on the way this sled works, suspension or handling wise? Pretty much across the board, everything works just like you'd expect on a Matrix uh, Polaris with uh, Pro CC in the back end. There is one small detail uh, that we're uh, not crazy about, and it's the only thing we're not crazy about, is the, all S4 models, are, are all models that are powered by the S4 engine, come with dual runner carbides, and it's, they're there to stop darting. And quite frankly, they soften up the uh, initial turn in of the front end of the sled. What tends to happen is, is uh, about the first 10 or 15 degrees of initial turn in, everything is fine. But then as you go beyond that at 15 to 20 degrees of turn in, it starts to understeer. That is not a Polaris trait. Uh, we're not super crazy about it, but it doesn't dart. And if, if anti-darting is, is what you're after, then you'll be happy. The good news is this, and it is good news. All you gotta do is take the carbides off and put a set of six inch carbides on it, and Bob's your uncle. You're back in business. It's gonna handle just like a Polaris, just like a Matrix, just like everybody's come to expect. And Polaris has uh, a pretty uh, strong reputation for really great handling, and they've carved that out by producing sleds that don't understeer. So that's if, if you get a ride, your first ride on, on one of these, uh, you may find that it feels a little bit soft on the turn in and a little pushy or understeerish uh, throughout the middle of the corner. And uh, sometimes you need to drop the throttle a bit or drag the brake a little bit. You can change all that by putting on a regular carbide runner. The skis are Polaris standard skis. They work great. They're very dart free even with a single runner carbide on them. Okay, so today I didn't spend a lot of time talking about QS3s and all the kind of features that are on this XC model because you know that stuff and we've got lots of walk-arounds and we'll have more on specific models. I wanted to introduce the S4 to you. I wanted you to get a feel for some of the, uh, or an answer to some of the questions I know that you'll have and there'll be more. So if you uh, liked this report, this walk-around, will you push the button that's on your screen there for us and uh, say that you liked it? We'd really appreciate that. So thanks a lot for tuning in again and uh, exciting news from Polaris.